and now we need to probe it. So on manual machines, especially on the manual mills, right, you either have an edge finder or you kind of eyeball it using a tip. We're not doing that. We have a Renishaw probe, which is going to basically just touch every side and accurately give us position. On this machine, that's going to be tool 30. Always changes, or always the same, never changes, tool 30. Anytime you're going to switch tools, three steps. MDI, you're going to type T in the tool you want, so T30, and then press automatic tool changer forward. Anytime you change the tools, same as that step. MDI, T, Down. number, ATC forward. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, one of the perks of these machines is you got 30 tools, it's going to swap automatically between them. So I got T30 out. This is my probe. It's a, I believe, five or six millimeter precision ground ruby. And so what I'm going to do is get it close to what I want to probe. So I'm going to jog it over here. With this probe, you want to be careful smacking into metal while jogging it. Because um, if you go full speed into a piece of metal, that ruby will shatter. Oh, that's a ruby? That is a precision ground ruby. So, they're very expensive procedure. Yes, they're not that cheap. <laughs> so especially when you're going on Z, right, slow controlled movements. What I'm going to do is since I want my origin to be roughly in the, or I want it to be exactly in the center of that part, I'm going to put my probe roughly in the center. So it looks, eh, there we go. As for the height, the height is not going to matter as long as you know approximately what it is. So right now it's maybe half an inch. I just need to know that number. To set our offsets, we're going to press offset. If you keep pressing it, it's going to switch between tool probing and work probing. We're going to start with work probing, so I'm going to highlight this. We're going to go down to which offset you want to set, which is going to be G54 by default. You can change the numbers manually, but if you keep going to the right, it's going to bring us to our probe option. These are all the preset, basically, motions that this probe can do. And you can see, if we had a rectangular block like we do, you'd normally do rectangular block. However, because of how small this part is, you can't really touch the sides off, so we're going to do something a little bit different for the x-axis. But we can at least do the web y-axis, which is just going to go on the sides and find the exact center on the y. So it's going to be 7. So I'm going to press 7, Enter. Switch over to web y axis, and we're just going to tell it exactly what it wants. So the approximate width. Three and a quarter. Yeah. Three and a quarter. Or measure it. <laughs> so three point two five. Y adjust is basically how far to adjust the origin. Since we want ours to be in the center, it's just going to be zero. We don't need to offset it. And then this is the important one. Incremental z is how far does it need to go down to hit the side of that part? We don't have a huge margin right here, but let's say an inch. So that means it's going to go over, it's going to go an inch down, and then try and find that surface. If it misses, not a huge deal, but... We're just doing front and back now, is that right? Right now, this is just going to be the front and back. Because of our vice, we can't really do the left. So I'm just going to move in the Y a little bit more forward because I saw that it missed that surface and just rerun it again. When it's actually running the program, it's pretty safe if it hits something it's not supposed to, and it'll tell you exactly what it did. So I can see that one inch down, pretty good. You want to make sure that the actual side of the ruby hits, not just a portion of that radius. Is there a spring in there, in that tool? Yes. Like if the ruby crashes down into it? Uh, down, not so much. Okay. That's why the most common way to break one is when you're manually jogging it down. If you accidentally slip your hand and it goes like that, no. <laughs> uh, it has a little bit of viv, but that's probably the most common way to break and one. And when it's touching off on the side, you said it has to touch the ruby on the end, it can't touch the rod? Correct. Okay. You, you want the red to touch. Okay. Uh, you do not want the white to touch, it just won't give you an accurate value. Because it's doing everything based off the exact diameter of that ruby. So, no error, which means we got it. And on this machine, there's a little bit of a bug. Sometimes it won't always update the G54 value. It does do it internally, but if you're ever just unsure, rerun it, and it will update the second time. Don't know why it does it. Kind of annoying, but...
What we want to see is after it's done probing, our Y is now zero. So now we have our Y on our G54, still got to do our X and our Z. Since I'm above the part, let's just go ahead and do our Z. If I want to touch just a single surface like the top, I'm going to do 11 single surface. And I'm going to tell it how far does that have to move to hit that top surface. About half an inch down. So I'm going to tell it to go negative 0.5 on the Z. And it's going to go down 0.5 on the Z. And it's going to try and find whatever surface is there. So probe failed, uh, probably because it's a little more than 0.5. So let's try 0.75. Once it finishes, no error, that means it's happy. Once again, it doesn't like updating that value, so I'll just run it one more time. The first touch, it finds it. The second touch is where it's saying I'm exactly right here. So, once again, kind of visual bug. I ran it the second time. You can see it's 0.57 above the part. Seems about right. Now what we got to do is just our X. Since this is a kind of a tricky part, what we're going to do is move the probe here and touch it on the X like that. Approximate width is going to be 3.25 again. And we want it in the center, so it's going to be a zero. Okay, so we're going to So just like how I did the web on the Y, it will do a pocket on the X and find the center of those two sides. to check our origin. I can bring this up. Set my Y to zero. You can see that looks like it's in the center of our part. The other drop. One thing to notice is our Z says 6.3. Once again, visual bug. For some reason, it doesn't always add the length of the probe. If you ever want to double check whether that's actually correct or not, you can take the, in the tool offset, Take the exact length of it, which is pretty much always 5.5, and subtract it from that. So that way it's about 0.8 above the part, which is actually right. Uh, quick question. So back there, you like, for the pocket thing, mm -hmm. you selected the value that's like your X width of your part, and you used the pocket like, measuring tool to set that distance, right? Yep, so in the pocket. Cause it's like it's like confusing because there's no actual pocket but well that's what we're doing right that vice yeah, basically is a pocket yeah i guess the... you know, if you're just telling it, it's about three and a quarter so it moves over and slows down sneaks up on it you would have told it 10 inches it would have just gone fast and hit it and the best way to find which one is just look at the photos all right that pretty much matches what our vice looks like and we're trying to find the center of it so that's probably what we want and if you read it It'll tell you what that number wants to be. Uh, it'll give you every information you need right here. So our origin is set. Our part's in there. It knows where our part is. So we're done with that. So now we got to set our tools up.